Good evening all, and welcome. Tonight we're going to be venturing into the dark interiors of cabins in the woods. I'm also joined by my good friend and fellow narrator, Warren James, from his channel, A Warning to the Curious. He has some very good content over on his channel, and it would mean a lot to me if at the end of the video, you would follow the link on screen and in the description to check him out. I'm sure you'll enjoy his works. But for now, it's time to get comfortable and let the darkness take control. I am an au pair in Sweden and spend most of my summer weekends in my family's summer house, which is out in the archipelago outside of Stockholm. Breathtakingly beautiful place, but boonies don't even begin to cover it. The nearest neighbour is about a 30-minute brisk walk away. And after that, there's nothing except ocean and thick, terrifying forest. This particular night was date night for my parents, so I was left with the two children alone out in the terrifying murder house. There are two houses on the property. One main house and the other is a guest house, where of course I got to sleep all alone. It's literally two meters from the ocean. The game plan was to go exploring in the forest, which I had never done alone with the children, only with the parents, and then walk to pick up my boyfriend from the bus stop. He would stay with us until our parents got home from their date, and then my boyfriend and I would go to sleep in the guest house. So while in the house, I kept getting the jitters. Things were definitely stranger, and it wasn't just because I was alone with two children. I grew up in the forest, but several times we heard the birds calling out these weird distress call noises, and big flocks would appear. A long time before we were even close enough to scare them. And there were big, thudding footsteps nearby. I was terrified of there being a big moose or something. We came to a little hidden lake. And then things got even weirder. Though the place is unpopulated for miles, there was a woman sitting on a rock opposite us, about 60 feet away. She was naked and wet, as though she had been swimming, even though the water was much too cold for that. When she saw us, she stood up and did this weird pacing thing like she would get too close to the water and then back away, then move close again, like she wanted to cross and come towards us, but there was the obvious lake barrier in the way. The kids were mildly worried, and it wasn't before long that I ushered them back the way we'd came, in order for us to make our way out of the forest. On the road to pick up my boyfriend, I had the oddest sensation of being watched. I was really terrified, actually. But we met him with no incident and returned to the cabin just as the sun was setting. We gave the kids dinner, and just as they were curling up with the Swedish comic book, the main door slammed open. I remember thinking it was a real person, there was a heavy footfall, and then bam, like someone had stomped and flung open the door. But there was no one there. My boyfriend went out and had a look around. Nothing. It must have been the wind, of course. Right? It's always the wind. While we were in bed reading the story, we could hear skittering around and clawing from underneath where we were. I knew for a fact that rats and other rodents camped out at the other end of the house, because that's where the kitchen was, 
but whatever. I had a really awful feeling in the pit of my stomach, but my rational boyfriend promised me it was a fox or weasel, and not to get worked up. Fast forward to 3am. I had to pee. My boyfriend and I were in the guest house. My bosses had come home long ago. I'm a badass, and pee outside with no problems. So I stumbled out of the darkness, and squatted down outside the guest house to pee. And it was right after, when I straightened up and adjusted my shirt, that I got that awful feeling of dread. It was the same one I had in the forest. The one I had when I was on my way to see my boyfriend. I had it while we were camped out inside the house. I had felt just fine in the guest house with my boyfriend. But now that feeling was back. Behind the guest house is a steep hill, at about a 45 degree angle, and on that hill sits what we call the ghost house. It was the house of an old soldier in the 1600s, and now it just sits there all terrifying and vacant. There's a trail going from the ghost house to the main summer home, and my boss had lit the trail with dim, useless solar lamps. You wouldn't be able to read by the light of the lamps, but the idea was to light your way up the hill and not trip and die over a tree root or something. I could sense a presence moving up the trail. That means something moving from the main house to the ghost house. I squinted in the dark and saw a shape of a person, but that wasn't right. Because by the solar light, you can see color, jeans or a shirt or jacket, and ours all had reflectors on them. But this was just a black shadow. I thought, an animal perhaps, but then ruled it out as it walked on two legs, walking really fast and smoothly. But then it slowed and seemed to notice me. I was actually terrified. Good thing I had just peed, right? But then my intuition told me to commence stare down. And so I did. I was fighting to see in the dark. And just when I couldn't focus, I realized there were two very softly illuminated eyes on its face. And they were on me. It slowed down to a stroll. And I could see the eyes changing tint from a bluish to a yellowish glow based on what they were in relation to the solar lamps. They were catching light. So I started. It was going so slow now that this felt surreal, and I could hear twigs snapping and other noises that a real-life, non-imagined creature makes. I remember actually thinking, this isn't a hallucination. It's walking on the ground. And then the weirdest part. Instead of moving at a normal, relative height, the way human eyes or animal eyes would, the eyes start kind of hovering. They were six feet off the ground, suddenly would dip down to four feet, then back up to five, and they never left me. But the direction this thing was moving in never changed. It kept going up the hill, the eyes and the figure faded out into the darkness once the solar lamps ended, and I went back into the guest house and locked the door. I heard nothing else that night. My boyfriend slept through everything, but early in the morning he woke up whimpering from a nightmare. And that's the only time anything has ever happened at that summer house, and I was there collectively for a month. We have around 200 acres of woodland. Me and my dad live on the front end of the property, and on the back side of the property, we have a rustic hunting cabin. No water or electricity. The back end of our property also sits on the edge of a state forest. You have to travel something like 12 miles before you reach any kind of road or trail. Several years back, during deer hunting season, 
My dad and I were sitting around the campfire back at our hunting cabin. It was near dusk, and we were done hunting for the day, just relaxing. We both saw something moving in the sky that caught our attention. A larger purple shape, about the size of a small car, was floating along just above the tree line. It was moving rather quickly. It came from the direction of the front end of our property, came towards us, went above our heads, and continued back towards the state forest until it disappeared from sight. If I had to guess, I would say it was moving about 15 miles per hour. It didn't look like a cloud, but it didn't look quite solid either. We both saw it happen and just kind of remained silent for a minute and then confirmed that we both saw it. Neither of us had any good guesses as to what it could have been. Only thing I can come up with is uh, <clears throat> swamp gas, but that's not a good explanation. I don't think. That's my strange hunting story. It hasn't been enough to keep me out of the woods, but creepy all the same. A bit of backstory before I start this. I live in northern British Columbia, Canada. And a couple of years back, my friend had invited me to come with him, his mum, and his sister to a resort by a lake, an hour and a half or so out of town. This was at the end of June and the beginning of July. This so-called resort wasn't exactly what I anticipated. It's a main log building where you check in, but it's also a restaurant too. A few log cabins and some spots down by the lake for RVs and stuff to park in. There's a highway that you turn off of onto the lot where the check-in building is. And to the right of the highway is the forest for miles, as well as everywhere else around that area. The only thing that stands out is the highway, which cuts through the woods. Around the lake, there's some houses and whatnot. But generally speaking, if it isn't a long weekend, there aren't too many people out there. The cabins and RVs area are separated and away from the main building, about a five to eight minute walk away. A little bit past the main building, there's a clearing where you could sit at a couple of tables that look like they haven't been used in about 10 years, as there are vines and grass that have grown around them. And about 10 feet into the woods, past those tables, there are two small lagoons, surrounded by an old wire fence. The lagoons and table area are important for later. We got there in the evening, unloaded the car, got acquainted with the log cabin, which was really nice, by the way, and then we went out to explore around. Not too many interesting things happened on our first day, as we didn't explore a whole lot before dark. Skip to the next day, and it's cloudy and rainy, which we actually were hoping for, as that meant that there were very few people at the resort, and we would get free rain over it. We explore down by the lake and around the cabin area more thoroughly and eventually make our way up to the clearing where the tables are located. We look at the tables and see that they haven't been touched in what looks like a long time from the amount of grass and weeds that has built up around it. And while investigating, I took notice that around 50 feet or so into the backwoods, there was what looked to be a clear area. We slid down into this ditch-like area, which was probably around eight foot difference in elevation from the nearest table area, and trampled through the brush. We eventually came to the spot, which we're pretty sure are lagoons due to the way they're constructed. We noticed there was a wire fence around it. We walked around the area planning to leave until we saw what looked like a spot where a large animal had walked over the fence and crushed a portion of it. Not really paying attention to the fact that a large animal may have been in the area, we dismissed those thoughts 
and said that it was probably bent like this for a long time. We tooled around the area, looking at the lagoons, and eventually we left, planning to come back the next day with big rocks to throw into the water as it was getting time to eat dinner. But the next day, we came back to the tables, planning to go into the lagoon area once again. But before we had a chance to go down the ditch, we stopped because of a noise. This is what triggered the rest of the events in this story. The noises we heard were those of walking over small twigs, snapping them in the lagoon slash ditch area we had traveled the previous day. Keep in mind, those footsteps weren't there before. We stuck around for about 10 minutes or so, until we got hit with an intense feeling of dread. After this, we said screw this, and went back to our cabin where we played poker for the rest of the night. While playing, we discussed the events that had taken place, and eventually laughed it off, saying it was probably just a bear passing through, or rabbits in the area. The next day it was raining heavily, and much darker than the past couple of days. We left our cabin and planned to go into the lagoon area later, but we wanted to chill around a medium forested area close to the cabins that I forgot to mention at the beginning of this story. As I previously said, after we had originally gone into the lagoon area, things started getting weird. We were messing around in the woods, breaking big sticks on trees, when we had heard what sounded to be someone doing the same thing about 200 feet away in the direction we were facing. It was hard to judge how far exactly it was, because of the way the forest carries sound, but it was pretty far in front of us. We wouldn't have cared too much about this until we took notice of where it actually was. The entire area around there and beyond is all forested, and having someone in those forests along with us that far in, and in the less than favourable weather, with very few people at the resort at that time, is unlikely. We decided to leave the area and come back later during the evening. Spoiler alert, that wasn't a great idea. So after leaving that area, we went around to the lagoon area and listened for a few minutes. We couldn't hear anyone walking, so we assumed that we were right about it being a passing forest creature. Not even ten steps in, and I tell my friend to stop moving. We both stop and listen. We hear what sounds like the steps again, but as they're coming in louder and faster, we get that same overbearing feeling of dread. We hightail it out of there, spooked as hell, and we book it back to our cabin. Later that evening, we returned to the forest clearing from earlier, where we had heard the branch against the tree noise in the day. We again started smacking branches against trees, this time not hearing anything. But as I turned to my left, something caught my eye. There was what appeared to be a person standing behind a tree, and I saw them duck behind it when they noticed that I noticed them. I nearly crapped myself, as I yelled to my friend that we needed to get out of there, and we sprinted back into the cabin. We returned the next day, and I took a picture of where the figure was standing. Later that night, while we're sitting in the loft area where our beds are, we have a discussion about what happened that day. There's much less joking this time, and we're trying to make sense of what happened. We started with the branch hitting the tree noise. At first, we tried to dismiss it by saying it was an echo, but remembered that the echoes weren't prominent at the time especially five seconds after hitting the tree. Only I saw the hooded figure in the same area later, but I knew it was a person, or at least think it was a person. We weren't too sure about that, 
So we moved on to talking about the lagoon slash table area. Nothing really too interesting came up in that conversation. We left the next day as our booking had ended. This isn't the end of the story, however. We came back last year around the same time, but we had brought another friend with us. We showed him around and briefed him about what had happened the previous year, and he took it with a grain of salt, as any sane person would. This eventually changed over the next three days. The activity this time wasn't so much in the side forest where I'd seen the hooded figure, and where me and my friends heard the tree noises, although we did hear the returning knocks again, but in the lagoon slash table area. I'll skip to the juicy stuff. So after showing our other friend the lagoon area, we decided to enter it after not hearing any noises. All went well, and we returned the next day. This time the footsteps were there once again, but a bit closer than before. We left that area, but returned around an hour later. We were determined to see what was repelling us out of there. But to get in, we had to be quiet. Slowly, we went down the ditch and to the lagoons without anything hearing us. And we didn't see anything there. We heard something snap a little bit away. So without making too much noise, we got out of there. The next and final day before we had to leave once again, we returned to the table slash lagoon area, where we were planning to go to the lagoons again. But when we were at the table area, we had heard something new. It was a sort of screeching noise, but it sounded like a person almost. At first, we thought it was a person who had injured themselves and was calling for help. But I made everyone stop and just listen before doing anything. We listened to it. And from what I heard, it sounded like a mixture between a person yelling, an angry cat hissing, and a shallow dog bark. My two friends decided that they wanted to get closer and investigate the sound while I was opposed to it. We went regardless but I stayed much further away as my gut was telling me to get out of there. We threw rocks near the area from where the sound was in hopes to flush it out of its hiding spot. And when that didn't work, we got much too close. We were right at the edge of a ditch close to the tables. And when I got as close as my friends did, something happened. The thing that was making the sound had thrown either a large log or had knocked down a tree judging by the sound. But I didn't exactly stick around to investigate. I turned tail and bolted down as fast as my legs would carry me. I was probably about 15 feet away from my friends as my danger reflexes were faster. And it registered to me faster that I needed to get the hell out of there. We were about 100 feet away when we came to a stop. Nothing came after us but the sounds then resumed. We walked around the main building, and when we came around, there was a black bear standing there. We let out a sigh of relief, as we thought we had been spooked by a bear. But then we shifted back to our previous feelings of dread, when the bear did the same thing as us, and got out of there as fast as it could. We didn't investigate further, and ran back to our cabin. Nothing further happened as we left the following day due to the reservation being over. I don't know what the lagoon slash table creature is, but I sure as hell know it's not any bear. The other thing in the forest, I'm still not sure about. I think that they're separate things, as the woodsman, or tree knocker as we've nicknamed it, is more elusive and seems to be luring us into that area while the screecher is very territorial and aggressive. I've tried to find things online about similar experiences in the area, but I've come up empty, which is another reason why I'm sharing this. Does anyone have any ideas about what this could be? I have no clue what's going on. Despite the strange things going on there, the location is very beautiful. The cabins are nice despite the spring beds, and the food at the restaurant is also quite tasty. The place is called Purden Lake Resort. If you look it up on Google, 
It's the one with the green roof. I hope you enjoyed the story. Years ago, me and my family were on vacation. I was pretty young at the time. We were staying in a rental cabin around 25-30 minutes outside of town. We stayed there as it seemed very affordable compared to other similar cabins in the area. When we first arrived, it did seem like a nice place. It had two floors and was very spacious, but many of the appliances were outdated. Come sunset, the place was lit up by the sunset in a beautiful yet surreal way. It was so quiet and so bright inside, it was surreal and strangely a bit eerie. After the sun had set and it became night, I started getting scared and paranoid, yet I had no idea why. I had never felt that way before or since. I had a hard time falling asleep, but I did, and nothing strange happened. We were out doing activities for most of the next day, as a family on a vacation would. We returned to our cabin around sunset. I decided to get in a hot tub that sat on a porch overlooking the hills in the sunset. But once again, I started getting scared and paranoid, and I went inside. We played a board game together. After that, we were all getting ready to go to bed. Everyone acted a bit strangely, though. My dad decided to go sleep on a couch downstairs. He told me to calm down, as I was still scared. He said he was not scared, and went downstairs to sleep. I looked downstairs, and saw he had a metal fireplace tool, I, I forget what they're called, hidden under the couch, as if he wanted to use it as a weapon. This was strange. He had never done that before, and he still denies he ever did. I now believe he was also scared and paranoid. I went into my bed and tried to sleep. I did fall asleep, but then I awoke, lights flashing in my eyes for several seconds before everything became clear again. I had slept with no dreams and had no idea how much time had passed. I looked at the clock and saw that a mere 20 minutes had passed. I tried to sleep again, but the same thing happened over and over again until I forgot how many times I had woken up and what day and time it was. I eventually got out of bed and saw it had only been a few hours since I had first gotten in bed. I was confused and scared, so I went downstairs to watch television to try to clear my mind. There was an old TV downstairs, and when I went to turn it on, I heard somebody speaking in a language I did not understand. I stepped back to see where it was coming from, and it seemed to originate from the speakers of the TV that was turned off. I started trying to think of what the noise might be. It sounded like people talking in Russian in some sort of code. It reminded me of radio stations where people occasionally talk in code nobody understands. I, I did not understand what the noise was though. I went upstairs to tell my mom and she said she heard the same thing coming from a TV in her room that was turned off. I was so scared, I convinced my family to check out early. We stayed in a hotel in the area, and nothing strange happened again. I, I never have alcohol, or prescription drugs, or any other drugs. I have never had any hallucinations or mental illness in my entire life. My entire family was affected by strange events at this cabin. So, does anyone have any explanations? Whatever happened was not because of any drugs any of us knowingly took. 
None of us have any mental illnesses. I have tried to find an explanation and could not, so I resorted to this. Unfortunately, I have no evidence, as I did not have anything to record with all those years ago. Please let me know if you have a logical explanation. My family have a cabin. It's actually a two-story house up in the Appalachian Mountains, but we call it a cabin. We share it with our extended family, and I've got the absolute best memories up there. But the house is nearly 200 years old, and when you're up there all alone, or sometimes in the dead of night, it just feels off. And nearly everyone has experienced some sort of bizarre experience there. The house sits on 350 acres. And one day, my grandfather went out hunting on the property. The sun was just beginning to set when he saw some sort of big black creature sitting near a tree line. It and my grandfather stared at each other and my grandfather fired a shot into the air, hoping to scare it. The creature stood up on its hind legs and walked back into the forest. He said the face was very cat-like, and it had a slinking gait with its long black tail. He was an avid hunter his whole life, and knew of every kind of creature that lived in those mountains but he'd never seen such a weird creature as that. And then, a couple of days later, as my immediate family and I were visiting, I saw some weird creature through my bedroom window at night. It looked like an enormous black wolf. When we locked eyes, it ran straight at me, and I instinctively jumped back. When I looked out again, it was gone. But my mum had an experience that chills me to the bone. For some reason, she was spending the night in the room that I usually stay in when I go up there. I don't remember the reasoning for it, but I hadn't joined her on the trip that time. She awoke in the middle of the night to a strange tapping noise against the hardwood floor. She stayed absolutely still and listened as the tapping turned to what sounded like claws scraping against the floor. They started from one end of the room, travelled across the floor under the bed she was sleeping in, and ended in front of the closed closet door. She was on her side facing the closet, but she kept her eyes closed and scarcely breathed. She says it was the most terrified she has ever been. Apparently, this clawing noise continued off and on throughout the whole night, and she didn't really get any sleep. There was even a moment that it seemed to hesitate next to her bed, and she could feel something staring at her mere inches from her face. So yeah, those are a few of the experiences that I know of that have happened there, but it's such a lovely house, and I have the most fantastic and wonderful memories from there. And I've spent the night in that very same room that my mum had the terrifying experience in many times since. Even as recently as last weekend. And I've never heard or seen anything while sleeping there. A group of friends were staying at this remote cabin that one of my friend's cousins owned. There were no roads leading to the cabin and it was a good three quarter day hike from where you parked the cars. I couldn't go at the same time as everyone else due to work obligations. So I decided to head up the same day, but later. It would mean I would have to camp for a night by myself. The latter part of the trail is too dangerous to be taken at night, especially by someone who doesn't know it. I didn't care. I was kind of looking forward to it as I've never camped alone before. So, I was in the middle of these woods when the sun went down. I got my camp set up in this small clearing, probably 40 feet across, get my campfire going, 
and pitch my small, one-person tent. Do all that camping stuff, like cooking hot dogs on a stick over the fire. And s'mores. I probably stayed up for a good two or three hours after dark. It was mid-autumn, so the days were somewhat short. The entire time, I thought I heard stuff moving in the woods on the edge of the clearing. I didn't think anything of it at first, because the woods are full of animals. But as the night went on, I realized that whatever it was, was just circling the clearing over and over. Once I started paying attention, it made four or five laps around before I decided to get up and investigate. The noise stopped as soon as I stood up, and I thought I heard some sound going away through the woods. I just shrugged it off, thinking it was some fox that was curious, and that got scared when I stood up. I decide it's time to sleep, douse the fire, and climb into my tent. I start to doze off and stay in that half-asleep, half-awake state for a while. I normally hear weird stuff when I'm in this state, so I don't think much of it when I hear a voice. Something wakes me all the way up, though, and I realize the voice is real and right outside my tent. It's just above a whisper, and I'm not sure if it was in another language or if they were just speaking English in such a way that I couldn't understand them. I lay there for some time, I don't know how long, listening and waiting for something to happen. There is just enough moonlight to light up the walls of the tent, so I can see when a hand presses into the wall of my tent down near my foot. This freaks me out, and I sit up quickly. Whoever was outside the tent tore ass out of there, like running, full sprint, through the woods. I get out of the tent and shine my flashlight around and see nothing. I was expecting there to be a bloody handprint on the tent, but nope. I didn't sleep that night, packed up camp at first light that morning, and booked it to the cabin. This was on my parents' property a couple of years ago. I couldn't sleep, so I decided to go on a short hike at around midnight. I was walking down a beaten path, with my rifle-mounted flashlight pointing forwards. It was really misty. I could see the silhouettes of trees, but nothing detailed. I got to my uncle's one-room cabin, about a quarter of a mile from my house, and took a seat on his picnic table. After sitting there for a while, I got up and turned to my right, and took about five steps into the grass. I pointed my flashlight, and into the mist, I could see two yellow predator eyes glowing at about stomach level, not ten feet away from me. I stood there for at least five long minutes, just looking into its eyes with my rifle pointed right between them. They didn't move or make a sound, just blinking every couple of seconds. I stared back silently, while trying to keep my composure. All at once, the eyes were gone. I walked forwards to where it must have been standing, and I didn't see anything. I didn't hear anything. No rustle of grass, no twig breaking, no dent in the ground. It was just gone. I ended up walking back home after that. I never did see its body. Just its floating eyes. My grandpa was telling me a story. I believe it happened in the 60s, near the Sandy Bay Aboriginal Reserve, which is in southern Manitoba. It was midwinter, and Manitoba gets plenty of snow. My grandpa told me his two friends, a wife and husband, were walking from their car to their house, carrying all of their luggage. It was just their cabin, not their house, so they were carrying the luggage up to the cabin. The first thing they noticed was a bright, bright light shining into the cabin. It illuminated the entire cabin, 
and was a fluorescent shade of icy blue. The husband thought he saw the silhouette of a strange tall humanoid in the cabin. It was lanky and very tall, standing alone before it walked out of sight. Quickly he ran into the cabin with his wife. They searched the cabin and there was nothing. So the wife went back out to grab more luggage. The husband said he heard a shriek from outside and quickly ran out to make sure she was okay. He was shocked to find her footprints leading up to the car, yet she was about 25 feet away from the car in the woods, with no tracks leading towards her. If she were to walk out there herself, her tracks would obviously be there. He ran out to her. She was distraught and hollering and screaming, and her eyes were glazed over. He took her in, and she refused to speak. She was admitted to a mental hospital soon after, and to this day has the same glazed over eyes, and she still can't speak. She experienced a horrible trauma out there, and I believe it's because of whatever the humanoid creature was. My grandpa still talks to her husband sometimes, and I believe he visited her about 30 years ago at the hospital. Horrifying. Horrible. On a 14-day canoe trip, we rolled up on this creepy abandoned fishing cabin. It was falling apart. We got out to explore and looked around. There were these ropes, or lines, hanging from tree to tree. And also there was a dead rotting moose on the dock. The cabin was empty, except for some shirts hanging up. And we began to realize it probably wasn't abandoned. There was a set of children's shoes in perfect condition, sitting outside on a picnic table or something like that. Same thing with a toothbrush. Fishing poles sitting upright and in good condition, when they would have been blown over easily in the winds. It was just a bunch of little things that pointed towards someone having been there recently. But it was all a lot creepier than it sounds. There was a constant feeling like someone was watching us, combined with just how run down and dilapidated the cabin was. I kept turning around as we paddled off, expecting to see someone hiding in the trees, watching us. My father and I were in a cabin in the woods with his girlfriend and her two kids. It was late afternoon, and my dad's girlfriend, Kathy, was making delicious enchiladas. As it was such a nice day, we had left the door open. In hindsight, this was probably a bad idea. Anyway, we sat down to eat dinner, and in walks this bear. Cue lots of screaming from us kids as everyone leaps to their feet. Kathy was the only one to act, <laughs> Mama Bear versus Bear, and she grabbed her chair like a lion tamer and screamed, Back, Bear, back, as she advanced towards it. The bear was intimidated and backed up out of the cabin onto the porch, which is when Kathy slammed the door shut and locked it. The bear hung around for like an hour. We watched it through the windows as it lumbered over to the chaise lounge where my dad had napped earlier that day. It began to gnaw and maul his pillow while my dad stood there murmuring, Jesus Christ, it likes my smell. It likes my smell over and over again. My dad is a big, burly, no-nonsense guy, but he was completely freaked out. Hi, this is Warren James. I hope you'll check out my channel. It's called A Warning to the Curious, but stick in the night floaters as well. Otherwise, you'll get all kinds of links to stories by my grandpa, M.R. James, who also wrote a story called The Warning to the Curious, kind of keeping it into the family. Anyways, it would mean a lot. I tell stories about the night floaters. What are the night floaters? Well, 
please check out my channel and you'll find out. There's a link on screen and in the description. And it would mean a lot to me. Thank you very much.